We're going to talk now to former Liberal leader in WA, Matt Burney. Matt Burney, thanks very much for your company. Let me ask you uh, right off the top, uh, the result in, in your state uh, at the federal level, does it surprise you, losing cow and losing Bert? Uh, look, certainly we were surprised by Bert uh, and I think also surprised by Cowan. Cowan, of course, was a very marginal seat. Bert, we did uh, hold some pretty high hopes for. But, look, in the main, uh, the Liberal Party hasn't polled too badly in Western Australia. Uh, an interesting analysis that I did over the last few days shows that most of the swing towards the Labor Party came from the Palmer United Party, who, of course, didn't really run candidates at this election, certainly not in Western Australia. Uh, I, I just had a look at a few seats. What do you think is the reason for that, Matt Burney? I mean, is that, is that a, a sign of disaffection with the government rather than a love of the opposition, maybe? No, look, it's really obvious to me, and has been ever since the advent of One Nation, that these sort of hardcore, sort of right-wingish parties can actually deliver that front-bar, blue-collar Labor vote straight from the Labor Party to the Liberal Party by way of their preferences. But... For some reason, every time people like Hanson and Palmer and others uh, stick their heads up, we tend to try and kick them. Uh, I think, uh, you know, now that Hanson has sort of re-established herself, uh, I think she also has the potential to deliver Labor votes straight through to the Liberal Party by way of their preferences. And I think we should be very careful how we handle okay. uh, the Palmers of the future and, and of course, Hanson now okay. going forward. OK, so focusing on Pauline Hanson, because she did get upward of 9% of the vote in Queensland and a fair mm. chunk around the rest of the country. Her preferences will be very important at the next election. You can bet that she will build on her popularity, whatever people might think about that, between now mm. and the next election in three years' time. Is, is your message to Liberals that they need to find a way to, sure, disagree with her on things, uh, but turn themselves into the preference port of call for people that might be prepared to put One Nation first? Yeah, people get very excited about this whole preference thing. They think that if you're swapping preferences, then you must be endorsing the other party's policies. And of course you aren't. Uh, you know, the Liberal Party very rarely has its preferences distributed anyway. I, I remember when I ran uh, in 2001 in my first election, uh, Richard Court, who was the Premier back then, a very good Premier, I might add, uh, issued the decree that we were not to swap preferences with One Nation Costing under any circumstances. Whereas in Kalgoorlie, I thought, well, uh, I think One Nation are, get, are going to get a reasonable vote. And... I did a deal with One Nation anyway, and nobody knew about it until Election Day, and I won that seat by 1% for the first time in history on behalf of the Liberal Party. So, you know, go figure. Uh, just with respect to Palmer, let me just give you a couple of very interesting stats that I, I had a look in the last few days. So there might be a few days out of whack now, but uh, in the seat of Brand, Palmer had a swing of about 8%. The Labor Party had a swing of about 8% to it. Uh, in the seat of Durack, uh, Palmer had a swing against it of about 7%. The Labor Party had a swing to it of about 5 In Stirling, Palmer minus 4, ALP plus 3. Uh, in Swan, Palmer minus 4, ALP plus 3. Uh, and the list goes on. Uh, Hasler, uh, Palmer minus 6, ALP plus 6. Uh, so the Liberal Party didn't actually fare too badly, despite the swing to the Labor Party in Western Australia. Most of the, those votes just came straight back from the Palmer United Party to the Labor Party. Uh, but, you know, as for all this talk about it, was it disastrous for the Liberal Party? Well, certainly it was a little bit mm. because we lost a number of seats. But let's face the facts. The Liberal Party got 836,000 more primary votes than the Labor Party, or at least the Liberal Coalition did at this election. So it was hardly a disaster for the Liberal Party. Let's just face the facts. What is your advice... Uh, for the two ideological wings of the Liberal Party at the federal level. Mm. It looks like uh, some Conservatives are going to be arguing that they need to have a greater say in a Turnbull government, given his uh, inclination to be more moderate. We've got a piece in Fairfax Papers in the City Morning Herald uh, by Tom Switzer, uh, who is a, a pretty well-known thinker in the Conservative space. Uh, equally, you've got someone like Christopher Pine, who's uh, given a, a bit of a whack to what he sees as Conservatives that have been talking out of school, trying to talk down the chances of stability within the government. He says that they would have been uh, absolutely thumped uh, if they hadn't changed Prime Ministers back in September. Without raking over old coals, so to speak, Matt Burney, what's your advice on how the Liberal Party can uh, unite rather than divide over these coming three years? Well, the first thing we have to do is re-engage our base. I, I think the, the key reason that we went backwards at this election is because we lost our base. And our base is typically, traditionally older Australians who have conservative views 
and we lost them. And, and in my view, we lost them for three reasons. Uh, firstly, the Medi-Scare thing did scare the pants off them. Uh, secondly, uh, you know, Malcolm is probably slightly more left than other Liberal leaders, and that was a bit of an experiment. It was one that I thought was warranted, uh, but it was one that I don't think fully played out well for us, and I think we need to be careful in dancing with the left uh, for fear of losing our base again. Uh, and I think the third reason that we lost our base at this election uh, was the, the, the lunatic superannuation changes that were made on the eve of an election. I don't know whose idea they were, but they were political lunacy uh, and they led in, in a large part to us losing our political base, which is older Conservative Australians. And the first thing we need to do is get those people back. But how do you do that? How do you do that under Malcolm Turnbull's leadership, given that he is seen as being uh, you know, a pretty moderate leader of a party that has conservative traditions? Well, there, there are two things you can do pretty quickly. Firstly, we can continue to make the case that we were never going to privatise, or the Liberal Party, uh, I was still using the royal we, uh, but the Liberal Party were never going to privatise Medicare, and that was just a disgraceful political tactic. And, uh, it's a bit of an indictment, I think, on Australians generally that some people thought it was actually true, uh, but it's more of an indictment on the Labor Party for propagating that myth. Uh, secondly, we can junk those silly uh, superannuation changes uh, because I don't think they've fully played out yet and I don't think that the hierarchy of the Liberal Party have fully understood just how dangerous those superannuation changes were to us at the last election. I mean, if you play with somebody's retirement plans, you can fully expect to get whacked by them, and that's what happened at the last election. Mm. So we can, we can sort those couple of things out pretty quickly, and I think just on an ongoing ideological basis, I think we just need to be a little bit careful about moving to the centre-left, uh, perhaps staying a bit more to the centre and slightly centre-right, uh, because that experiment didn't work particularly well at the last election. Former Liberal leader in WA, Matt Burney, appreciate your thoughts. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Pete. All right, we're going to take a quick break.